In the JavaScript programming world, you will hear a lot about the DOM or D-O-M or Document Object Model. And I want you to think of this like a representative. For example, you have an advocate such as a lawyer or a solicitor in a court of law and you have the person they're trying to defend. The lawyer is not the person themselves. However, they speak on behalf of the other person. There's an advocation. Well, likewise, we understand that this does happen in JavaScript. Let me just show you something. If I go to the console and type in window, we have an object. This object is like to JavaScript the advocate. It gives us information, details, APIs on this particular window. Now we are looking at this entire window object here, but we understand that this object isn't that window object. It's not these buttons here and this button here and this address bar here. It's an object so that JavaScript can understand it. It can get details of this particular window. It's an advocate. It's a way of interacting and communicating with this window object. Well, likewise, you also have the DOM as well. All of these elements, you've got HTML, then you've got the header with some information in, and then also you're gonna have the body as well, which is the visual representation. And you can see here we have the header one, and you also have the included myapp.js script. So you have all of these things here. You have these nodes, what are called nodes. You can think of nodes like leaves on a tree. A node is just a small piece of a larger system. So you have the overall tree structure and then you have the little nodes which are the leaves. And likewise, you can think of the document here as the overall tree and you have lots of nodes, lots of little leaves that make up the tree structure. Now, likewise, we do have an object that resembles this document here that allows us to access the document, change the document, so we can change what the user is visually looking at. Currently, we've only been working really in the console and modifying data, but what we haven't been doing is actually changing the visual data that is presented to the user. Now, understanding data, how to work with it, modify it is very important. That's the first step. But then you need to be able to present this data, hand it back to the user. And in that sense, we need to be able to access the document that they're viewing. So just as we have a window object, which tells us all the information about this window, we also have the document object. And if you take a look at the window object, you can see that document is actually a global symbol available to you. So it's attached directly to the window. You've got the overall window here, and then you've got the document here. And so the document object, just as you can see when I hover over it, you can see it highlights it for me automatically. So we've got the overall document. It tells me, you know, the URL. So where we're currently at, you can see there. It just gives us information. It represents this document. Where's its location? What's the active element in the document, such as the body element, which is the where we put in nodes. We put in HTML elements that are visual to the user. So you've got the document. And then also you got child nodes. Remember, you have the overall tree structure, which you, when you look at this, when you start folding things out, what you have is a tree structure and you have nodes inside of there. So you've got child nodes to the document and you've got the dot type there on the zero level that goes here. That's the zero level. And then also you've got HTML as well. So you've got the HTML element. That's the root element. So if we go back to console. We go into HTML and again, we get details about the HTML elements. So for example, base URI, that tells us the file location. You got, you know, the height of the HTML element, the client width and so forth. So you've got all sorts of information about this element. It's not the actual visual element that you're looking at, but it's an object that represents it, that gives us details and actually allows us to modify it. And within the HTML, you also have child nodes. So you go into the child nodes and there it is. You've got the head, the text and the body. So if you take a look at the elements right here, you have the head and you have the body. So you can have a look at the head and you can modify stuff in the head, for example, which we've got the meta and the title. So if you go into console, you can go into head, for example, and you can also take a look again at the information about the head element and inside of there you also have other child nodes so to take a look at the child nodes in here you have text meta text and also title as well you have all this different information and i can actually modify the title of the document via html you have the inner html or inner text and there we go javascript essentials and that's showing up there in the browser and that 
is there, JavaScript Essential. So it's giving us details about this specific node in my tree structure. And that's it, that's how I look at it. And also, you have within the HTML, you've got child nodes, and then you've got the head, you've also got the body. And the body is normally the one that you want to access. So you go into the body, and again, you've got base URI, you've got all sorts of information, and also you have child nodes, because we've got the body element, so you open that up. Now we can take a look at the child nodes, which is the header one, and also the script node. So we can take a look at the header one node, so go into console, and just say child nodes, it's an array, and there it is, we've got a header one. And you'll notice when I hover over it, this object is, is linked to the visual representation of that node. So I can hover over it, say header one, and again, within header one, I can take a look at changing the computed name, I can take a look at the inner text, the inner HTML, and so forth. And there's tons and tons and tons of information, such as events, and we'll take a look at events later on. But you can see the document object model is where we have a document that's represented by objects, and it's modeled upon how you've developed your HTML file. So when you're developing your HTML file, there is an object structure that is automatically generated by JavaScript, and those objects represent those elements you've created. So that's what document object model means. It's not the actual visual thing that you're looking at, but it is an object representation of the document. So you can modify the document in JavaScript using objects, and that will reflect back the changes to the actual document. And in the next lecture, I'm gonna show you how to access this document and work with it. So instead of saying document dot, for example, child knows, and then I go into this array and then I say, right, go grab the first element in the array, which is the HTML. Then I also wanna take a look at the child nodes again. Now it's keeping track of this, but this is not convenient. This is not a good way to access the DOM. Then I want to go ahead and try to accessing the body now, and you'll see that it's printing out the HTML here. And again, these are objects, you've just noted that these are objects, but the console just prints it out in HTML format just to make it nice and easy for you so you can highlight things. And then you need to go into child nodes again, and then you need to do this and that. This isn't convenient. This is not the right way to access the document object model. I want to, let's say, access the document object model via CSS selectors, via their ID, via their classes, and so forth. This is so important because the reason why we want to do that is because if I start changing around, let's say the nodes, so now we have child nodes and then let's say, let's say child nodes and I want to access the one on two, let's say that's going to be text, let's try three, that's script, so I'm going to say one, there it is, there's the HTML. So you see, even now I'm getting a little bit confused as to what elements are on which index, it's getting a bit confusing now. So now I've selected my header one, for example, but if I go back to brackets, and then I change my index.html, let's add in a paragraph, for example. And now I'm gonna say, hello world. Well, now the paragraph has taken over the JavaScript Essentials ID. This was at one, but now this paragraph could potentially be at the level of one. So when you start modifying the HTML, then this could break, and that means your script can break because it's not targeting the right element. So this isn't a good way of accessing the document object model. The document object model is generated automatically. We've got a ton of objects, but the way we access the document is a lot like how we access it via CSS. We use the CSS selectors and we target a specific element and then we style it. Well, you can do the same thing in JavaScript, and that's what we're going to do next.